In this video, we're going to go over a head-head machine configuration and finding the center of rotation on that head-head assembly. So what I have drawn here is the diagrams that we're going to use for finding the center of rotation on the z-axis. What we're going to want to do, this is a front view of a machine, and what we're going to want to do is on our router table, our machine table, we're going to want to set up an indicator base with an indicator on it in a horizontal position because what we're going to do is touch off on the face of the spindle and then we're going to rotate the spindle 90 degrees to the side and touch off on the diameter of that spindle. Those are the two points that we need here. So what we see is the first measurement and then here we have the second measurement. You don't want to move the indicator in between these two setups and what you want to do is make sure that you zero the indicator so that the spindle has touched down and is hitting a zero point somewhere in the throw of that indicator. And then go to that exact same zero point in both orientations with the z-axis, looking at that difference in the z-axis amount. So when you touch off on the spindle face, that's going to be your first z that you record. Then rotate the spindle up 90 degrees and touch off on the diameter of the spindle. Now when you touch off on the diameter of the spindle, you're then going to have to add the radius of that spindle. So whatever that diameter is, you're going to want to measure that precisely. Find the z-axis measurement on your indicator and then add that additional z-value to it and compare your two z values, subtract them from one another, and you will end up with the distance from the face of your spindle to the center line of rotation in the z-axis. Now in the next steps, we're gonna to look to see if the center of our spindle is aligned with the center of the rotational z-axis at the top. And we need to find out if there's any shift in X or Y to the center of that spindle. So those will be the next steps that we go through. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the X axis and see if there's any shift in the X or the Y axis, actually, um, on your machine for this head-head configuration. So I've gone ahead and made two drawings on the board behind me here. What you're going to want to do, this is again the front view of the machine. This is our table in both views. Both of these are looking at the front. We've got the spindle axis vertical facing straight down and we've set up the indicator so that the indicator is pointing straight up in the air. And we're going to want to do the exact same thing like we did with the Z. We're going to put some pressure on the indicator so that we're somewhere in the throw of the indicator uh, going to a zero position on the dial. So what you want to do is bring the head down and come over and you want to find the edge of the spindle. This is going to need to be a, a fairly precise surface. Um, usually most spindles have a ground lip on them that you can reference off of. And we're going to want to find the edge of that spindle and we're going to want to note the x-axis location at that spot. Now I've drawn this to where the c-axis uh, one side is bigger than the other so that we can see um, the actual rotation that happens. So once you've found this x-axis position with the indicator up against the side of the spindle in X, then you're going to want to jog the machine away because we don't know if there is a big variation in the alignment of our spindle axis with the C-axis rotational axis. So we don't want to rotate up against the, the indicator itself in case there's a large variation there. And what you're going to do is move away and then spin the C-axis 180 degrees and then come back down to that same zero reading on your indicator and see if there's any difference in that X position. Uh, if there's a, a difference in that X position that needs to be known uh, because that means that the spindle is not perfectly aligned with the rotation axis of your C. 
So once you have that X position done, you can simply apply the exact same thing by setting up the indicator so that it's facing a Y axis orientation. And you can repeat those exact same steps to measure the Y axis to find out if that spindle is aligned with the C axis um, in the Y axis direction or not. And that's really all there is to it. Once you have those numbers, you can actually find any shift in Y or X to the center of rotation. And you also know your Z height um, from the previous example that we did on the board. I hope this helps.